Welcome back. Today I want to be testing out some lures, which I do quite frequently. Uh, whenever I started white perch fishing, really kind of hard targeting the fish, um, I was really trying to understand what it is about a particular lure that excites a white perch. What about a lure makes them want to engage it? So I went through, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30 of the most popular panfish lures, testing them out extensively. And a lot of times whenever you go out fishing, let's just say that in a four hour span, you catch 30 fish. You come out of that day with a lure, you say, that's a good lure. I caught 30 fish today on this, it has to be good. But what I was doing instead was I caught 30 fish. My question would be, could I catch more? So I take that lure out, cast it into an area, and then cast another lure in the exact same area and see which one performed the best. And I did that over and over again until I came up with what seemed to me like a pretty good selection of lures. But along the way in that process, I thought, you know what, I think I can improve this. I think I can improve on these lures and actually catch more fish. And I devised a plan, came up with a lure, made it, um, and uh, whenever that completely failed, <laughs> I started over again. So basically what I did was, uh, I was, I was tying uh, hair jigs at the time, and I tried probably, I, mean, I probably tied 40 different hair jigs. And I had them super complicated, hackles, ostrich feathers, I had everything, anything complicated you could have in there, I had it in there. And when all of those completely failed, I basically just went back to the drawing board and started looking at some of the lures that were doing pretty well. Why were these lures doing well? What, what about them? And for areas I was fishing, it seemed like the perch were targeting things like bay minnows. They were very streamlined. And a lot of lures I was making had too bulky of a body. So the first thing that I had to have was a streamlined body. <clears throat> and one of the ways I was going to do that is the way people do crappy jigs. They use some chenille around the body just to keep that body area streamlined. Moreover, the hair that I was using, it had to be sparse and it couldn't be too poofy. Because uh, if it poofed out too much, it basically created a situation in which perch just weren't willing to engage it. And at the time, the only hair that I was using that could do that was marabou. And uh, so I tied up probably about five or six, probably more than that, marabou hairs. Um, and early on, the ones I was tying, they were still complicated. I probably had, I think I had like five or so hairs in each one of those lures, five or so feathers per perch persuader. <clears throat> and I took them out fishing and uh, they were actually catching some fish. It wasn't great, but they were catching some fish. And I started using them for a while, like you just kept using them cast after cast. And the more I fished it, the better it did. I was like, the more it got torn apart, because after about 200 or so fish, those lures start to tear apart after a while. And that's what was happening. And the more it got torn apart, the more sparse it got, the better I was doing. So then I started tying up a couple that were much more sparse. And uh, guess what? They started performing really well. <clears throat> and then after that, I was basically, I didn't really try too much in the way of other sort of hairs or anything else. I basically just said, I got this one. I'm not going to go any further than that because <laughs> I'd already spent a lot of time and energy trying to figure out what could work to begin with. So <clears throat> I started uh, this season tying up a bunch of different hair types with all the things that I learned uh, from tying up uh, hair jigs from the past, try to employ those things for things like bucktail, uh, rabbit hair, and uh, foxtail and uh, see if I could tie up a lure that was going to be even more effective. Um, and kind of that's what I'm doing today. I'm doing a little bit of testing of uh, different sorts of hairs that I've tied with the same principles of uh, the same sort of slim body and not too, not too full of a presentation while it's swimming in the water and sparsely tied. So we're going to see what happens. All right, the first lure up that I got right here is uh, marabou and uh, rabbit hair right here. That's an all white uh, color. And the reason I like the rabbit hair is that uh, it's pretty durable. I found that with rabbit hair, I can catch probably pretty close to a thousand fish before it even starts to degrade. So with the key with the perch persuader is, especially if they're on the bottom or whatever, just let it drop down a couple seconds and then start the retrieve. 
Might be some tough fishing today. I'm gonna throw another cast over here to where these fish are jumping, popping. And then I'm gonna change to the standard perch persuader. That's the gold standard. That lets me know when I'm doing right or wrong. There's a nibble. Another nibble. There's a fish. There's a fish. All right, that's the rabbit hair right there. <clears throat> rabbit hair with marabou. Let that guy go. All right, this is fox hair and rabbit hair. Send it out, we're only about five feet deep here. But there's a there's a hit right there. There's a crazy ton of movement in this one. It might just be hitting that tail. And the other thing I'm gonna do is that the next time I cast it out, I'm going to, they're hitting it. I'm going to reel it, retrieve it a little bit faster. They're definitely hitting it. This time I'm gonna retrieve it a little bit faster. There we have it out. Let it drop down. There's fish hitting it. Fish hitting it. So this one's getting a crazy ton of nibbles. Slow, steady retrieve them way back. There's fish. So maybe I have to let it a little bit, a uh, little bit faster. But that's the fox hair. What I noticed this morning, that's that's the most they've ever tried to nibble at a lure. For the most part, with uh, perch persuader style lures, they hammer it. This is just rabbit hair, this next one we'll put on. So this is the fox hair and rabbit. And again, this is a little more of a fuller bodied lure. This is gonna be fuller right here. This is the commander. And this is rabbit hair for the tail. So we'll send this out. This one may be a little bit too full for them. No nibble. Oh, there's a nibble. There's fish. Well, that's first cast, so I guess I can't complain about that. First cast, and again, that's that's rabbit hair right there. I have a little bit of uh, that's mustard and red right there. All right, here's a well-used uh, regular marabou hair perch persuader. This is going to give the thinnest profile. Just nibbled it a little bit. All right, might be a tough bite today, but I'm going to take this. Uh, rabbit hair cast her right back over the same spot see if it's a little bit better or not you definitely can work this rabbit hair much much lower you can have it completely and totally still and get lots of action out of this lure if you got to present slow the giggles I'm gonna throw on this uh, bucktail so here you have a bucktail perch persuader tied up the bucktail for this presentation is going to give the most subtle action. Not going to be a lot of tail movement. One of the things I like about the other hair jigs is when they get wet, it weighs them down. So whenever you're casting them, it's like casting a much heavier lure and cast it way farther if I need to. Those fish on the bucktail and pulled off. That's whenever they just tail nip it. They're barely just getting the hook in their mouth. I gotta set those drag lighter. I gotta set the drag lighter. There's fish. Bucktail. This is a very sparsely tied bucktail. <clears throat> Have you seen it? Right there. Very sparsely tied. Tied this one on the video. There we go.
bucktail. One of the other strategies you can employ whenever they're barely nipping it like that is use a little bit smaller of a presentation. This is an eighth ounce. I have a sixteenth ounce as well, some that I've tied up. They're nipping this guy. There he is. There we go. There's your bucktail fish right there. Bucktail doesn't always perform well. I can just tell you that right now. Today might be a bucktail day. I only got one of these with me. That's it. So if it is a bucktail day, then this better last me. <laughs> better not break it off. There's a nibble right there. Fish. I'd love for bucktail to be the one all the time. It's just because I know that as long as I don't lose the lure, they're not going to damage these hairs enough to, for me to have to put on a different lure. So the bucktail doing pretty good here. And now I'm going to put on a standard one, standard perch persuader. There it is. There's a the platinum lady. I'm going to give it three total casts and then I'm going to, whoop, getting a hit. I'm going to switch back over the bucktail. The fish. Whoop. There he is. All right, that was the platinum lady right there, and this is the standard marabou. There we had four casts there. Let's try the the bucktail again. I cast it right exactly where I was casting before, just to see. This is a little bit different of a color, but but the presentation is a little bit different, that's for sure. Oh, there's a fish. That tells me something today. So again, you never know what's going to happen. It's why I tie up different haired lures. Now it could be specifically this color, so I am going to put on a standard perch persuader color but that was first cast bucktail whoops that was a horrible cast but what are you gonna do this is an exceptionally sparse tied bucktail I have had almost no success whatsoever if I have any thickness at all to bucktail hair that's cast two here we have the classic tried and true perch persuader right here marabou hair This is going to be super thin through the water. Look very streamlined. <clears throat> One more cast here. Nipping all the way. Now let's go bucktail for a little bit. That's what I like about testing these guys out. Go back to back. Get some that were nipping. Will these guys actually engage this time around? Because they're still there. They haven't left. There's fish. Look at that. Bucktail. So that was uh, exact same color, exact same everything, except for this particular one using bucktail hair. <clears throat> the standard perch persuader color, they were just nipping at it. They were still hitting it. Nipping. But today might be a subtle bite day. And like I said before, if it's a subtle bite day, the bucktail is usually the king. Now I want to put on a standard bunny. So I got the standard perch persuader right here, color, marabou. Now I want to put on one that's, I think I have one that's all bunny. Yeah, I do. I got one that's all bunny right up here. Just one, apparently. There's the bunny. All right, bunny, let's see what you got. Another hit. They really like this hair, this bunny hair. 
it really does draw them in. But today is such a subtle bite, they're not, they're not fully taking it. There's a fish. Bunny hair fish right there. Oh, it came off. But again, that's the tail nipping that you get. That bucktail is so sparsely tied, it's hard for them to nip the tail. They don't know where the tail is. This one right here, they have a very distinctive tail they can hit. But they are hitting it. They're hitting it a little bit better than they're hitting the marabou version. All right, now we're gonna throw the bucktail over there. Hope I don't lose it. <clears throat> Horrible cast. What are you going to do? Did what was called a miscast behind me. I love it whenever I do that. May as well use it. Make it look like it was intentional. That was intentional. Oh, there's a fish. Ooh, that guy hammered it pretty good. <laughs> Bucktail today. Bucktail today. There's another bucktail fish. And this is exactly why I was telling you that I experiment and I try different lure types. Because whenever I first started tying these, I tied some bucktail. I tied them way too thick and I had never even got a hit. If you look at that, that's like next to nothing. There's next to no hairs there. But if you see it swimming, it actually, it balks out a little bit, but not a lot. And because it's so sparse, whenever they tail nip, they end up nipping the hook. And it seems like that's what they want to do today. Fish, another fish, another bucktail fish. Don't ever count out the bucktail. There you are. Now, I'm gonna throw the bunny hair back over there for a couple casts. See if the striper wanna eat it. Haven't caught any stripers this morning. A little bit of a surprise. Reel a little bit, oop. Reel a little bit faster, there we go. Is that a striper? Reel a little bit faster to make those fish engage on it, not make a choice about it. There we go, bunny hair, right there. It's a pretty good one. I'm gonna try that same strategy, bunny hair, let it drop and then uh, bring it back in a little bit faster. All right, we let her drop. Reel it back in, just uh, whoop, getting hits relatively quickly. There's a the fish. Look at that. That may be the strategy for the old bunny hair. They want the bunny hair. I've just been moving it too slow. So that's two consecutive casts with a bunny. Standard particular color, silver and white. I'm gonna throw one more cast over. And then we're gonna throw the uh, bucktail back over and try the exact same thing. Now let's throw back over the exact same spot with uh, bucktail. Same thing, throw it out, let it drop. Then I'm gonna start a retrieve that's gonna be relatively uh, just a slow, steady retrieve. There's fish. <laughs> so again, you never know what's gonna happen. That's exactly why I do these things. What day, what type of lure, the only difference is the tail hair I'm using. That's it, you got color, everything else is exactly the same. The difference is, tail hair. Alright, we're gonna throw the we're gonna throw the bucktail again. A couple three casts. Probably not fair to throw it first, but whatever. Let it drop down for a couple seconds. No nippers on that one. Fish. There is a fish. That was cast number two, bucktail.
and we'll throw it over. Three over here. Gonna drop. I like about the bucktail, I can really work this slow, and it seems to it seem to not. Whenever they're nipping it, they actually get the hook. Throw a bad bunny out. They drop down there a couple feet with all the jellyfish all over the place. Hope there's a nipper. All right, cast one. Fish. Cast two. <laughs> well, bunny's a little bit different of a presentation. I need to move that one faster. Otherwise, they just nip it too much. I like working it faster anyway. I think I've been able to work the bucktail relatively quickly as well, and it worked today. But they definitely seem like uh, it's more of a subtle bite today. So the bunny is working pretty well. The worst performer today is the, uh, the standard marabou version. I'm going to have to throw it back out a couple casts, but uh, now I'm going to throw the bunny over here. Or excuse me, the bucktail over here. And I'm going to try to work this one a little bit faster than I have been working it. To see if that makes any kind of difference with this lure. All right. Let it drop down. Fish. He's got me into the post over here, daggone it. He's gonna break me off. What is that? You gotta be kidding me, I don't know how I got it. I did. No idea how I hooked that guy like that. We're at 20, a little over 23 inches right there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> right, I think I'm gonna wrap it up right here. Uh, pretty productive day. I won't say I caught a, a lot of fish, but it was productive in that uh, I was figuring out a little bit more about uh, how I'm going to tie in the future some perch persuaders. I was testing out some tail hairs. Everything else about the perch persuader was the same except for the tail hair. I had uh, fox hair, hair, had rabbit hair, had bucktail, and then of course marabou. Uh, early in the day, the bucktail was doing really well. Uh, actually, it outperformed everything else. When everything else was getting, get, was getting nipped and getting nothing, the bucktail was catching fish. And then as the day warmed up, the rabbit hair started outperforming everything else. To, I mean, not majorly, but it was outperforming. And to me, that's good news because the rabbit hair lasts significantly longer than marabou. Marabou, after about 200 to 500 fish, it will start to break down. Uh, we get these fish with uh, raspy teeth. They just start pulling the hairs out. And something like rabbit hair, it ends up, it's durable enough to last 1,000 fish. Now bucktail, that was another one that was a good news story for me because that one, I mean, I literally could probably catch 2,000 fish on that before it starts to tear apart. Tear apart. Bucktail is pretty durable. Um, so uh, I think if I've learned anything, it's basically that uh, I can use more hair types and I'm gonna experiment just a little bit more with uh, the way that I tie them. At any rate, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, taking you guys along for the ride for some of the experimentation that I do often in the water. And uh, <laughs> Sometimes it uh, works out in my favor, and sometimes everything I try doesn't work at all. <laughs> Those are not great days, but today pretty much everything worked. At any rate, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and until next time, I'll see you on the water.